Imagine not being able to leave the house because your illness keeps you locked in the bathroom. Now, my next guest, Diane, says she's been dealing with this drama for the past 10 years, and it has taken a toll on her physically, emotionally, and financially. She says it's frustrating that people don't understand the gravity of her disease. Take a look. In June of 2004, I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. Everything you eat and drink irritates the lining of the intestine. I get fevers, chills, aches, pains. It's like a combo of the flu with a stomach virus. There's some days where I may only need to go to the bathroom a couple of times, and there's some days where it may be 10, 12, 20 times. When I have a flare-up, I'm living in that bathroom, and I'm there for hours. Ulcerative colitis has affected me emotionally, financially, and physically. It makes me sad because there's times where I can't participate in my children's events, my boys' baseball games, or family events. We have medical bills, we have doctor's visits, co-pays for medicines, co-pays for testing that has to be done. I can't work full-time. There's days where I just can't really fully function. I'm confined to the house or I'm in bed. People don't understand that it's a chronic disease. They think you've had a good day or a good week and then you're all better and you're not. It really is no worse thing if you're sick. It's such a huge thing. It affects every aspect of your life. Well, we talk about everything here. Diane is here in the audience. Also joining us is our good friend, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall, Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. So welcome, glad to have you here. Um, so tell us a little bit about what Diane is suffering from. Diane's been diagnosed with an illness that falls into the category of inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD. It's called ulcerative colitis. Mm -hmm. Now, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, the other form of IBD, together affect about a million and a half people here in the United States. So Diane did a great job of describing some of the right. symptoms. Um, and so, but let's go back over them because I think it's important for people yeah. to know. Uh, the first is this chronic abdominal pain, so stomach pain. In addition to that, diarrhea, and that can be frequent, so frequent that people end up losing weight, getting dehydration or even malnutrition. Right. In addition to that, sometimes they soil themselves, occasionally have blood in their stools and fatigue. And that's just a few of the many uh, symptoms that people suffer from. And Diane also did a really good job of talking about how this can affect your life. So sufferers often have embarrassing situations that they have to deal with. Their daily lives are disrupted. And that can lead to social isolation and also can lower people's self-esteem. Yeah. And When it, your body image goes down, your self-image goes with it sometimes. That's exactly right. And then that makes it even harder to deal with the situation. And then on top of all of that, there are all of these medical interventions that may be required. Mm -hmm. And so a good question is with all of this going on is for Diane, which is of all of these things, what's the thing that really bothers you the most or is hardest for you to deal with? Life is like a roller coaster because you might have one good day and the next day you might be in and out of the bathroom all day. So people see you when you're having a good day and think you're fine, but don't understand those bad days. And probably the hardest thing is the toll it takes on my children. Uh, about a month ago, my son actually asked me if I was going to die because I was having a bad day. So, you know, how do you tell a 13 year old really what is going on? You, you, the first thing you want to do is recognize that the worst situation a child can be in is when they feel totally out of control and they don't know what's going on. They have a lack of information and they perceive a lack of control. Then they feel helpless. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, could my mother die here? Is there something that I should be doing that I'm not doing? And you want to allay those, those fears. You want to say, look, this is a, this is a problem here. Mm -hmm. And here's how it makes me feel. So sometimes, I look okay on the outside, I'm kind of churning on the inside, but this is not something you need to worry about. I'm, you're not gonna open the door and find me dead in my okay. bed. You're not, because really that's where their heads will go. So allay their fears and let them know that you're working on this and that it can be a process and that it takes time. You talk about how hard it is for young people to know and process this information. 
interestingly about this disease, a lot of times because of its embarrassing nature, people don't want to talk about it. Right. So they try to self-diagnose. Well, let me just go and see what's going on. Maybe I can manage it and not have to talk to it about talk about it to anybody. The other thing that happens is there's a lot of misinformation in this area. There's a lot of confusion between two disorders. So the first is the one that Diane has, which is IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. The other is IBS, so you can see where the confusion comes in, but that's irritable bowel syndrome. They are completely different illnesses that have different treatments and different needs. So it's really important to see your doctor to get a proper diagnosis. And do you know exactly what you have? I do. Okay, so I have you've been got, diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. Right, you've got it figured out exactly. Yes, right. and Diane's been not just a, um, a good seeker of information for herself, but also a guide to other people. So she's one of those at the forefront of mm -hmm. talking about it where others, uh, others don't and seeking right. good information. So the, so the reason that IBD is such an important illness to get under control by the way, is not just the kind of suffering from day to day, but this serious illness puts you at risk for serious complications, one of which, for example, is the increased risk for colorectal cancer. So it's important to see a doctor, get a diagnosis, but to also go for routine follow-ups because right. it's important to follow over time. Yeah. And a lot of people with IBD are asking the question, so what's going on? Are there advances in treatment? Are there clinical trials that are ongoing? And the answer to that is yes. This is an area where we're learning more and researching. So um, again, information is important. So um, I'd like to invite people to visit, and Diane and I have talked about this as well, gethealthystayhealthy.com. We have information about IBD and also about available clinical trials. Yeah, and listen, everybody knows I'm a huge fan of gethealthystayhealthy.com, mm -hmm. and spend some time there, and particularly in this area, because there, what I fear is that people will self-diagnose and then they either don't do things they need to do mm -hmm. or they do things like continuing certain diet regimens that are really a problem. So all of that's spelled out on gethealthystayhealthy.com. Yes. So, you know, go there. And thank you for sharing. Because I know everybody doesn't like to talk about this, but you oh, did a great you. job of doing yeah. it.